Hello, hello, my name is Sophia and this is an audio version of my blog entry entitled How to find geotag tweets on Twitter. Introduction. The ability to find localized information is extremely important when carrying out live investigations. Often in my workday as an OSINT analyst, I'm tasked with finding data on ongoing events to help gather more evidence about what happened. This could be a video of the aftermath of a terrorist attack showing an amount of victims that could or not be different than the official numbers given by the local government, maybe photos taken in a way that enable us to quickly geolocate the incident, or even perhaps evidence of how the local forces are attempting to censor the coverage of what happened by the press or nearby citizens. All of the data I'm tasked to find will come from social media, and although this really depends on the country, a lot of it will be coming from Twitter. Some other social media platforms such as Facebook or YouTube are great for older data, but for quick live event ones, Twitter is definitely at the top of my list. Previously, I have explained how to find geotagged videos on YouTube using an online free tool. In this blog entry, I'll be focusing on a different, also free, OSINT tool for when we need to find content that's being posted in real time regarding ongoing and unfolding events. And here comes Bird Hunt. In order to regularly find geotag data on Twitter, I use a great OSINT tool developed by Louis Thomas Evans entitled Bird Hunt, which allows me to select any area of the world map to find tweets posted within a certain radius plus other options. It's very easy to use and it already contains a tutorial within the website, but I'll still go through all the steps of what I usually do. Although most of the time I use it to find crucial pieces of evidence regarding possible human rights violations, I also use it for another, probably less thought of, task which I will cover later on in this article. Bird Hunt as a tool to find evidence. Most of my searches for work are of unfortunate circumstances, usually around possible human rights violations. I wanted to spare you a bit and instead choose something nicer for this tutorial on how to find data on Twitter around specific events and locations. At the time of writing, it's May 2nd, 2022, the end of the holy month of Ramadan in many countries. On this day, Eid is celebrated by many people around the world and as any happy event, Twitter will be full of nice messages and photos that we'll try to find. I have decided to go with Saudi Arabia as my target location as I know that Eid started on Sunday, the 1st of May and the country will be celebrating Eid al fitr I have decided to go with Saudi Arabia as my target location as I know that Eid started on Sunday, 1st of May and the country will be celebrating Eid al fitr on the 2nd of May, which is today. When I was writing at least, not when I'm recording. Within Saudi Arabia, I figured that the capital, Riyadh, will be the most likely candidate to find some nice tweets as it has millions of inhabitants. When you open Bird Hunt, you'll be greeted by a world map. You can either zoom around until you find your target location or you simply use the search option if you have a searchable place in mind like a city such as Riyadh. And I'll show you. So go to birdhunt.co and you have a map. You can just zoom around and you pick that one. Or you can actually enter the name of something like we had. Yeah, let's go, let's go with that one instead. <laughs> Why not? There you go. So you just have this one instead. Off you go. Once you're happy with your selection and have clicked on the map, in case you were zooming around, you'll need to confirm location as shown below. So if I show you the map, this is not happening anything. So you need to confirm location and woo, look at that. Suddenly something happens. Immediately after confirming the location, a menu on the right will pop out and you'll be able to select what search radius you want. For this task, I have decided to go with suggested 10 km radius around our pin on the map. Afterwards, we could just go with this search as it is, but let's select show advanced options as I want to tweak it a bit more. On the advanced option area, we can add a query by inputting keywords, search for media type, search for questions, and add a minimum of like and retweet count. As I'll be looking for photos of e-celebrations, I will tweak my search accordingly. I'm hoping to find specifically images of food because they're always amazing, both in taste and in presentation. 
So let's quickly jump to our trusted old friend Google Translate and see how to write Eid Mubarak, so blessed feast, the way to wish people a happy Eid, in Arabic, the official language of Saudi Arabia. Once you're done, you can press the double rectangular, that one, circle in red below, to copy the translation. Now we go back to Bird Hunt and input our keyword that we just got from Google Translate into the Add a Search Query there section as shown below. So you have it there. I've also selected the Just Images and Video option as I'm looking specifically for that. In general, unless I can read the language, I just stick to gathering photos and footage as anything else takes too long to translate and my focus is on gathering evidence anyway. You have also the options to search for questions or add a minimum like and or retweet count. So there. I do not use this feature as usually what I'm looking for is raw material and therefore without any likes or retweets yet. I would say this feature is probably very useful to see what trends are emerging in certain areas and what people care about in specific locations. I can imagine it being great for journalists looking for local stories or even local campaigners trying to find out what the population is talking about. For this example, let's just skip these settings. So here, just don't do anything, don't touch it. There you go, next. Lastly, there are two more options, the first to filter out tweet replies and the second to choose the language in which the tweet was submitted. For this task, I selected to display all tweets and to give me the results in Arabic as it is the language I used for my keywords. And that's it! Time to click search for tweets and see what we can get. You don't even need a Twitter account for this as it will work just the same. Bird Hunt will then input your search options into the search bar on Twitter, like that. So mine contain the following. This is what I got at the end. First, you see the keywords that I was looking for. So this one's there. Then the coordinates of my pin on the world map. So this is it. Followed by the radius of search. So 10 kilometers. Then filtering by media only, as I only want photos and videos. And lastly, language Arabic. And here's a compilation of some of the results I got. Definitely plenty of mouth-watering photos of food shared on Twitter by people wishing others and eat Mubarak. Look at that! I would eat all of it. All of it. And I can just show it in action by instead of finding the Eid Mubarak, we're going to have Happy New Year. And we're going to have in Arabic as well. Why not, right? So let's search for Riyadh. There you go, Riyadh. And you'll be like, yeah, it's fine. Let's just move it to that section instead. It's all the same. Anyway, so let's put about 10 kilometers. There you go. Advanced options. And we're going to put Happy New Year in Arabic. And then we're going to put images and videos because we want to see pictures of it. Same as before. We don't need this section, this section, this section. All of it. Why not? Just all of it language. We can put Arabic, it's fine, you'll probably find it just Arabic anyway. And off he goes, look at that. Lots of pictures, ha wishing people a happy new year 2023. And sheep, that makes sense, I'm sure it makes sense. Bird hunt as a tool to improve your sock puppet account. This is one of those occasions in which I found a use for a tool that was not intended at first. In the OSINT world, you'll need social media accounts in order to access data in certain platforms. This could be Facebook, Instagram, Telegram, etc. It's a very bad idea to use your real account for obvious reasons. Last thing you need is to click the like button on the post of someone you're investigating and immediately flag yourself up to them. A sock puppet account is a fabricated persona created in order to safely browse around without the risk of having the account connected to your real identity. I have so many of them that I keep a little notebook with all the information next to my workstation. Here's a little preview of my sock puppet notebook below. So this is my sock puppet notebook and yes, I drew those socks. And this is information I have inside, obviously censored because I'm not an idiot. <laughs> the problem with sock puppet accounts is that they usually have no friends, content or interactions with other users. So they might be easy to spot, although people still won't know who's behind it. Most of my sock puppet accounts are like that, but sometimes I will need one to be a bit more active. 
This could be to wanting to get information that's behind private groups or only available if you're within the friend bubble. Take for example Facebook groups in which you have to be approved in order to view the content of a page. For those situations you need a convincing sock puppet and those take some work to make it realistic. At this point I believe that in the near future I will need to gain access to certain groups on certain platforms, being deliberately vague here, to gain information that wouldn't otherwise be easily available. I have been using bird hand to make my sock puppet sound more realistic. I will explain my quick and simple process below. Let's imagine I want to pretend to be Greek for whatever reason. I do not speak or read any Greek, so in order to keep my account active and looking legitimate, I need to find a way to post content in Greek. I would not trust whatever Google Translate gives me, as although a very good tool, sometimes you'll get some weird translations that any native speaker can identify as being translated. So what do I do? I search for content that Greek native people have posted online, translate to confirm it's nothing too weird, and then post it as my own. In a sea of content, it's almost impossible to tell I just copy-pasted a random thought on Twitter especially if the platform of my sock puppet account is not even Twitter. Here's how I do it. I select the most populated city in my target country. So in this case, I'm going with Athens. So here we go. After confirming the location, I picked the highest radio option of 25 kilometers. At this point, I don't really care about location. I just want to target Greek speaking Twitter users. On the advanced options, I select to filter out tweet replies as they're usually conversations or discussions between people and I'm not looking for interactions. There's also the option to select a specific language, so I chose Greek to avoid any tourists or anyone else tweeting in a different language. Now that's all done, I can just click the search for tweets option and see what I can find. An important note is that some languages are gendered. This means that there's a difference in the sentence of a man or a woman. This is not the case in English, but it's certainly the case in my native language, which is Portuguese. As a general rule, I try to pick users that match the gender of my sock puppet account to avoid any issues around gendered language. I also avoid tweet replies as they're usually directed at someone and I just want a one or two sentence content in a target language to keep my sock puppet account active and relevant. Something simple like Happy New Year or Mondays are divorce are perfect. News or sports related content is also good if they're neutral and won't get people all riled up because the last thing you need is someone trying to engage in a discussion with you in a language you simply don't know. So after a quick look around, I found this tweet. There you go. That's definitely the type of material I would use. It says that in Greek, again, I don't read Greek, which according to Google translates to not that I would not eat, accompanied by a decadent looking strawberry meringue cake. In this situation, I would find another image of something equally delicious looking, add a sentence I just copied from the Twitter user and submit it as my own with some emoji next to it. Doing this over the space of weeks and months will definitely make your account look more legitimate. This, of course, is not the only way to make your user look like a real person. You'll also need to start adding other people and occasionally comment on stuff. Emojis are great to avoid language and widely accepted as communication. But this is the strategy I use to find content in the native language of a geographical area using Part Hunt. Conclusion. Overall, Bird Hunt is a great tool developed by Louis Thomas Evans, who also created HuntIntel.io, an intelligence gathering platform I had the pleasure of testing and providing feedback. I often use Bird Hunt for the two tasks mentioned above. On one hand, it's great to see what's happening in specific locations and gather data in the form of photos and videos from users sharing content during an unfolding event. And on the other hand, it's very useful to trick people into thinking you know the language by finding and copying content from native speakers into your sock puppet account. I hope you find this tool as useful as I do, and if you can think of any other ways of using it for OSINT purposes, I'm all ears. Thank you for listening. Sophia.